Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Good morning to everybody. Very happy to be with you. Celebrate uh, these wonderful sacred mysteries of our faith here in Rome. Um, and just uh, inside the walls of Rome, the Porta Latina, the Latin Gate, our, our Basilica, just inside. And here I am waiting to celebrate with you in honor of our Blessed Lady. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And to prepare ourselves, so important to prepare, isn't it? To prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily sacred mysteries. We call to mind our sin, our weakness, our failing, our desire, our desire to hear God and to do his will in our lives. I'm offering this Mass for the intentions of every one of you who are celebrating here today with us. Perhaps you'd just like, now like to think, what is your intention for this Mass? I'm offering it for all of you. Who are you offering it for? Just recall to mind your personal intention. And now in this moment of repentance, we ask God to show us his mercy and kindness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to take away sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to lead us into eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary of the Virgin, may be set free from present sorrow, and so come to, etern to enjoy eternal happiness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. The wisdom of God cries aloud. The Lord created me when his purpose first unfolded, before the oldest of his works. From everlasting I was firmly set. From the beginning, before earth came into being. The deep was not when I was born. There were no springs to gush with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I came to birth. Before he made the earth, the countryside, or the first grains of the world's dust. When he fixed the heavens firm, I was there. When he drew a ring on the surface of the deep, when he thickened the clouds above, when he fixed fast the springs of the deep, when he assigned the sea its boundaries and the waters will not invade the shore, when he lay down the foundations of the earth. I was by his side a master craftsman, delighting him day after day, ever at play in his presence, at play everywhere in his world, delighting to be with the sons of men. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response is, my heart exalts in the Lord, my saviour. My heart exalts in the Lord, my saviour. 
My heart exalts in the Lord. I find my strength in my God. My mouth laughs at my enemies as I rejoice in your saving help. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Saviour. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the weak are clothed with strength. Those with plenty must labour for bread, but the hungry need work no more. The childless wife has children now, but the fruitful wife bears no more. My heart exalts in the Lord my Saviour. It is the Lord who gives life and death. He brings men to the grave and back. It is the Lord who gives poverty and riches. He brings men low and raises them on high. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Saviour. He lifts up the lowly from the dust. From the dung heap he raises the poor. To set him in the company of princes, to give him a glorious throne. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the world. My heart exalts in the Lord, my Saviour. Alleluia, alleluia. Happy are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited. When they ran out of wine, since the wine provided for the wedding was all finished, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said, woman, why turn to me? My hour has not come yet. And his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. There were six stone water jars standing there meant for the ablutions that are customary among the Jews. Each could hold 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. And they filled them to the brim. Draw some out now, he told them, and take it to the steward. They did this. The steward tasted the water, and it had turned into wine. Having no idea where it came from, only the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said, People generally serve the best wine first and keep the cheapest sort till the guests have had plenty to drink. But you have kept the best wine till now. This was the first of the signs given by Jesus. It was given at Cana in Galilee. He let his glory be seen, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, dear brothers and sisters, transformation into Christ. And we had Mary to help us. Mary, who was so full of the Holy Spirit. Mary, who so loved the Holy Spirit. Mary, who so knew what it was to live in the Holy Spirit and just completely accept her life as it came to her and do exactly what God required of her. Mary is here uh, with us always 
when we consider our own transformation into Christ, a work we all want, but a work we know depends. It's so dependent on the Holy Spirit. But let's just now look at this scene, the wedding feast. It looks as though Mary was one of the principal guests because she was invited and then almost after a comma, then Jesus and his disciples were there, but Mary was there. So it's very important that Mary is here. Mary was there. And what does she teach us? Well, I think the first thing that strikes me reading this gospel today is Mary is very decisive. She doesn't sort of wonder, have committee meetings or anything else. She is very decisive. Surely that's a fruit of having the Holy Spirit overshadowing her all her life. She just says, son, they have no wine. What's that to me? My hour hasn't come. Very decisively just turns to the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. Very clear, very decisive. No room for misunderstanding. Do it. Do it. Do whatever he tells you to do. And they do. And they fill these pots full to the brim uh, with water. And then we see afterwards how Jesus has worked this amazing miracle. And the, the, the steward says, you kept the best wine till now. And those of us who are listening, listening to Mary, following that advice, are allowing God to transform us more and more uh, through the Spirit to be the presence of Christ in the world today. We too uh, rejoice at this miracle, this wonderful miracle. And so what is the miracle about? What's the deeper meaning of the miracle? Well, obviously, it is all about God. And it's all about something very special. The first reading today says, wisdom cries aloud. That's what it's all about. God, God's wisdom, crying aloud. Can you hear? Can we hear? Are we becoming attuned to God's wisdom? Now, from the book of Proverbs, this wonderful, wonderful section, um, so explicit, uh, but wisdom has always, well, wisdom is God. And wisdom, once creation uh, was taking place, wisdom, of course, was there and was delighting. He said to be there all the time, to be delighting. Um, I've lost it, doesn't matter. To be delighting in, in, in all of creation. And the spirit goes on, delighting in all the recreating that's going on, all the transformation that's going on in our lives in these days. And how, what's the key? What is the key to this? The key is, uh, it's earlier on in the book of Proverbs. It's the last verse of the first chapter of Proverbs. And it says something like this, whoever listens to my voice will find security, will live at ease and will not fear harm. Wonderful. This is wisdom speaking, crying out aloud. Whoever listens, the key is to listen to his voice. How many voices, but no, listen to his voice. Jesus listened to Mary's voice. Mary listened to Jesus' voice. The servants listened to Jesus. And they did what he told them to do. And we know in our lives it's exactly the same. We must do what God tells us to do. And we'll only be able to do that when we have this key, when we keep attuning ourselves to listen to the voice, the voice of God, the voice of wisdom, the voice of the Good Shepherd. My sheep know me. They hear my voice. I know them. They know me. They hear my voice. And they follow me. That's the key always, every day, to find time to listen as Mary did. She listened and pondered all these things and treasured them in her heart. So, uh, wisdom, the wisdom of God, the wisdom of Mary. But remember Mary saying, do. Do whatever he tells you to do. And 
So, dear brothers and sisters, to continue our transformation into Christ, let us do whatever the Lord asks of us. Listen, pay attention, listen, and our lives will be transformed into God's glory. Amen. Amen. So we just pause for a moment and um, maybe just listen to God in the sounds of our hearts for a moment, because that's where our security is. Whoever listens to me will live in security and be at ease. Just let's pause with that thought. Now I think we'll bring our petitions to God. I think you have some petitions prepared. So Lord, hear these prayers that we now make in our faith. Let us pray. For Pope Francis and for all our bishops and priests, deacons and religious. We pray for vocations to the priesthood, diaconate and religious life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all lay people in the church, that they too recognize your call to them to be active members of your body, bringing your love to those around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have suffered in so many ways during the COVID-19 crisis and for those who have helped to make life bearable for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our We thank you, Lord, for the rapid development and deployment of COVID vaccines. We ask for an end to the pandemic worldwide, peace in the hearts of everyone afflicted, by it, restoration of our country's economy, and the return to normal parties and community life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for ourselves, for everyone in this meeting. Lord Jesus, open our hearts to welcome the Holy Spirit. Help us to put our trust in you with respect and faith that you will give us all the gifts we need to bring your love, compassion, joy, and good news to those who need your pre presence in their lives, in their lives at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this year dedicated to Saint Joseph, we ask this intercession, his intercessions for all workers who have lost their jobs or whose income has reduced. Lord, please restore livelihoods and financial stability. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We raise up to you, Lord, everyone who has called our healing prayer line and for those who have ministered to them in prayer. We pray for all who are sick, particularly members of our team and others present today and their family and friends. And from the chat line today, we pray particularly for Annette. Um, her family had a gathering, and after the gathering, sadly, eight of them have tested positive. This has resulted in Jim being in intensive care. And at the same time, coincidentally, Annette's mother is in hospital, sadly isolated from family because of a patient testing positive on the ward. So Lord, we just pray for healing for all these people. Lord, in your mercy, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for the people of North Germany and other countries suffering from floods, that they may be able to rebuild their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all the children who are suffering from mental problems due to lockdown, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for the peace of Christ that possesses all understanding, the joy of Christ that soars to the heights of heaven and the love of Christ, which the answer to all that we have to endure in this life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. So we ask the intercessions of our Mother Mary for all our needs as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are part among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty God, ever-loving Father, we make these and all our prayers to you, and we continually ask you to help us to listen to listen to you, to listen to your Holy Spirit, to listen to your divine word in our hearts, and to listen to one another, that our lives may be constantly transformed into your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray now that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with these sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join now with theirs in humble adoration as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down the Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and our Bishop, and all his collaborating bishops, and all the clergy, and your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Please prepare now to receive the gift of Christ's peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lord God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Dear brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now you can all make this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Communion antiphon. Blessed is the womb of the Virgin Mary, which bore the Son of the Eternal Father. Now the post communion prayer. And the blessing. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Peace. So we're going to uh, have a time of adoration of the Blessed Sacrament now. Um, whilst Father Anthony sets that up, uh, which will take a couple of minutes. I just want to give a, a quick introduction. Um, a lot of people uh, really appreciate adoration, but some people still struggle with it. So just to say that, you know, although we're a charismatic group and, and many people associate charismatics with, with joyful, loud praise, which of course we'll be doing later, um, but we also place a great importance on silent adoration of Jesus present in the Blessed Sacrament, because it focuses us on the fact that everything we do is through, with, and in the Lord Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's an opportunity for transformation. St. Paul in 2 Corinthians 3.18 talks about contemplating the Lord's glory and being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So as we listen to what he is saying, as Father Anthony was encouraging us to do. We listen to what he is saying to us in this time of silence. It encourage, encourages the charisms of prophecy and discernment, which can in turn lead to the charisms of healing and miracles. So 
do please make the most of these 10 minutes to sunbathe in God's glory and to be open to words or pictures which the Holy Spirit may give you, which you can then share in the time that follows. Let us pray. And this prayer I came across is from Father Henri Nguyen, who many of you may have read some of his books. He says this, Lord Jesus, free me from the many things that occupy and preoccupy me. Help me to just be with you, to pray with you, glorify you, thank you, worship you. I want to be attentive, more ready to hear you. Make me still, Lord, make me quiet and speak to me in that silence. Amen.
O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, All praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every 